we all know that the world is sinking into ruin. It doesn't take too much to take a look at how this thing is slowly going down on, a, on virtually every level, morally, spiritually, financially, socially, uh, politically, etc. <clears throat> and we see that it's, it's sinking into the hands and the domination of the prince of this world. In order that we ourselves do not succumb in this battle, we need weapons, obviously, in order to be able to fight that. Obviously, in order to make use of the rosary as a weapon, we must be in the state of grace and firm in our faith. And there's a reason for that. The saints tell us, and of course the church also tells us, that none of the sacramentals have any efficacy on the side of the individual using them if they don't have faith in them. The second thing is, is that you have to be in the state of grace in order for your prayer to merit anything. And that's a very important point. There's two. There's a very common misperception that if I do a good thing, God will reward me. That's not true. That is simply not true. The good work that you do is only meritorious in the eyes of God. That is, it's deserving something from God, who's infinite, if you are participating in his nature in some way. And that's what we call grace, that St. Paul says. So, unless you're in the state of grace, you can't merit anything from God. So, all these people in the state of mortal sin doing these good works, they're not meriting anything in the side, on the side of heaven. Now, their, their works can have naturally natural good effects, but to actually beget merit in the eyes of God doesn't help much. And here's the thing. When it comes to the spiritual warfare, merit is practically everything. Not all of it, but it's practically everything. So how holy you are determines how powerful your prayers are in waging the spiritual warfare. So this is one of the reasons why it's so important to become holy. People say, well, what's holiness? Sanctified perfection is defined as excellence in grace. So in other words, you have a lot of it. And the adornment of the soul of all of the virtues. This is one of the reasons why it's a common misperception that the spiritual life is just flowery and wonderful. It's not it at all. The minute you start becoming holy, the first thing God does is make your life miserable. And he does that for a reason. He has to start stripping you of seeking after the consolations. If you're doing prayers for the consolation, you have a natural motive, and you're not doing it for his sake. You're doing it for your own. And so that slowly has to be stripped of it. Well, the point is in all of this is you become holier. The efficacy of your rosaries as you say them will increase significantly. These two realities, that is the rosary and then our firm faith in grace, are the bulwark of our defense. And the rosary is among the most powerful weapons laid in our hands by Our Lady. I don't buy all this modernist nonsense and historical revisionism, which says that, well, we're not really sure if St. Dominic got the rosary from our late, that's just garbage. We have known from the tradition all along, she gave it to him, she gave it in this form, and we know what it is. So it's not rocket science, it's just, a lot of it is because the, some of the modern theologians, did, you know, who themselves don't particularly care for our lady, wanted to poo-poo it. We know that the rosary will be a very efficacious prayer if for no other reason than there is a reference to it even scripturally. Most people are unaware of this. It's kind of a remote reference, but it's still there. We read in John 21, 6, quote, He saith to them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw it. For the multitude of fishes, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, 153. And, and although there were so many, the net was not broken. <clears throat> what we mean, what we understand in this passage is, is that the 153 is the number of Hail Marys in a full 15 decade rosary. The three for um, in the beginning for faith, hope, and charity, and then the rest of the 15. Maybe at another time, not necessarily now, you can ask me um, <clears throat> some questions about the luminous mysteries. But here we're just talking about historically that was the reason why <laughs> there was 153 fish named specifically. They weren't able to draw it in which indicates that the rosary is something greater and stronger than those who use it. And it indicates that the efficacy of the rosary as a net in order to bring in sinners, as well as to conquer enemies. That is, it can bind them and restrict them so they can't hurt you, they can't affect other people, that type of thing. Among the 15 promises of the rosary, find that the rosary shall be a powerful 
armor against hell. In fact, Padre Pio said ro- the rosary is the weapon, not a weapon, but the weapon to use in spiritual combat. Now, that doesn't mean that there are, I mean, obviously, the, the sacraments and things like that would take precedence over this, but here he's talking about, specifically, if you're, using, if you're talking about things which the lay people can do themselves without the need for a priest and things of that sort. It's founded on the devotion to Mary, and we know from Scripture that Mary shall crush his head. It promotes a life of meditation, and this is quite important. Sometimes people will go to exorcists and they'll just say, you know, that the demons are afflicting me and that type of thing, and they're, I'm, you know, I'm being bombarded with thoughts. Well, the way to break that is through meditation. Because as you meditate, the demons can't stand what they see in your imagination, and they'll bail out. They'll try and avoid it. And they can't stand an imagination that's properly subdued through the habit of prayer. <coughs> and this, so it blocks them from being able to affect our intellects, and they hate an imagination also that is subordinated to God. In other words, if you're praying, you're lifting your mind and heart to God, which means you're subordinating your mind to God and submitting it to Him. And that they don't like. For the sake of His sorrowful passion, have mercy.